With the side-to-side -side VPN, everything was rainbows and unicorns, but there was a question still unanswered, which was, what if I don't need this public internet? And what if I needed something more secure? Like a private connectivity, which could improve everything for better. Not exactly, but I hope you're getting the point. Thanks for joining in for today's session of AWS, where we will talk about AWS Direct Connect and AWS Direct Connect Gateways. And we'll see what it has to offer. So sit back, relax, and if you're ready, let's begin. Okay, let's read this statement first. So AWS Direct Connect is a cloud service solution that makes it easy to establish a dedicated network connection from your premises to AWS. That was a lot of words, isn't it? But the most important part here is to consider first is dedicated network connect. The second one is the name itself, which is Direct Connect. And the third one, that it is a cloud service solution. So when you combine the first two terms and you think about it collectively, you realize you're talking about something that is a direct connection and a network connection that is for all purposes a dedicated one. So what does it mean? So it means that you will have a secure channel using a dedicated network connection directly pointing to your AWS cloud infrastructure. So if I put this question to you, then how would you imagine it? Yes, you will think of this in a way that which can help you establish a private or dedicated direct connection between AWS and your data centers or your office networks. So unlike side-to-side -side VPN that we had discussed previously in the previous episode, so if you haven't watched that, then I would request you to please watch it. So we are not talking about a connection over a public internet space. And you should remember this point very clearly. And the third one is that it is a cloud service solution. When you think about cloud and service and solutions, you should always remember that this is something that AWS will help you with. And you don't have to do it yourself as it will provide you with a service that can help you create your own AWS Direct Connect. Don't worry, there are a lot of steps that goes uh, for creating the Direct Connect and we will discuss them in detail moving forward. So now let's read the statement once again. AWS Direct Connect is a cloud service solution that makes it easy to establish a dedicated network connection from your on-premise to AWS. I hope you got a better context to this statement once again, as we have done a small explanation as well. And along with providing a feature set that can help you establish private connectivity between your AWS and your data centers, it also helps you to reduce your network cost. So imagine setting up optical fiber connectivity on your own or creating multiple data centers at various locations. That would be really hard and expensive, isn't it? And it will also help you increase the bandwidth throughput and most importantly, it will provide you more consistent network experience than internet based connections. So as I told you that direct connection provides a dedicated connection from your on premise or data centers to AWS, it basically lets you connect to the AWS direct connect locations. So as you can see here in the image as well. And these dedicated connections can be partitioned into multiple virtual interfaces with the help of industry standard 802.1Q virtual LANs. And we know that virtual LANs are much more efficient compared to LANs as they are very much coupled with their broadcasting domain. And I don't want to confuse you here. So please just remember that using industry standard 802.1Q virtual LAN, the dedicated connections can be partitioned into, into multiple virtual interfaces. And what's the best use of it then? Yes, the multiple virtual interfaces that you have allows you to use the same connection to access both public resources such as S3 or Glacier and as well the private resources such as EC2 running in your private VPCs or the VPC within the private IP block. And yes, this is like one shot and two targets. Cool, isn't it? As you can see here in the visual as well, we have shown how the connectivity is established from the on-premise network to the AWS Direct Connect locations. And there are a lot of locations also to choose from and they should be co-located to yours. So, and you can check the list in the documentation as well. And with the help of the multi-virtual interface, we are able to access both resources as I already told you. So one will be private and the other one will be public. Okay, so I hope you got some idea about this. Let's move on. So as I already told you that we connect our on-premise networks to the AWS Direct Connect locations, it is not that simple. And there are a lot of ground stuff also that goes in this as well. So let's try and understand that. So the main idea of connectivity in Direct Connect is that it links the internal network that you have to 
an AWS Direct Connect location over a standard Ethernet optical fiber cable. So when I say this, you might jump up to me and ask me that you just told us that we won't do anything. It's AWS who is going to do the things for us. Wait, wait, wait. Just let me finish. Okay. The way the Ethernet optical fiber connection works is that one end of the cable is connected to your router at your location and the other one to an AWS Direct Connect router. And that is how you create the virtual interfaces. But before moving forward, we need to understand how it is actually done in the base level itself. So AWS provides us with a separate service altogether to create our AWS Direct Connect. And here we take the decision of what is the Direct Connect location that we are going to use and the connection size that you need. And there are two approaches to create the Direct Connect connection. One is a simple setup and the other one is using the wizard which gives us more options to customize which we will check out in the demo as well. So don't worry about that. Then we will create the connection request based on the requirement that we have. And after you have done this, as I already told you, then you will create the connection request based on the requirement that you have. So once you have done this, the second step or the second phase that comes along is the letter of authorization. And what we will do here is we will download the letter of authorization from the console. I know you might be getting confused here, but understand this very carefully. We are trying to set up a secure dedicated connection and not a shared connection. So for that, we need people to set up the connectivity for us from our network to the AWS Direct Connect location. For that, we need the help of AWS Direct Connect partners or AWS APNs, which are nothing but our AWS or Amazon partner networks, which is basically your global community of partners who leverage Amazon Web Services to build solutions and services for the customers. At every data center that AWS has or any of the services that they provide, they tie up with companies to provide a solution. For example, in India, we have Tata Communications for AWS Direct Connect and don't get confused with AWS Direct Connect locations and APNs. Okay, they are different. So we need to make use of either AWS Direct Connect partners, that is the hosted connection or, or you can make use of the APNs, that is the Amazon Partner Network. So once you download the LOA or the letter of authorization, you need to give it to the APN partners, partner network. So they get the approval to create the cross network connection at the AWS Direct Connect location, which is also known as cross connect. Remember that term very carefully. So that is basically called cross connect. So once you download the LOA or the letter of authorization, you need to give it to the partner network. So they get the approval to create the cross network connection at the AWS Direct Connect location, which is also called as Cross Connect. So moving on, once all this is done, you can create the virtual interfaces so that you can access your private and public endpoints from the office space as well. So this is how the ground reality of the Direct Connection looks like. I know I might have missed a few things, but I believe this is more than enough. So don't worry about that. So the first step, create the connection request using the AWS Management Console. Then you download the letter of authorization and uh, pass it on to the Amazon APN or the Direct Connect partners and you configure the interfaces which is basically to create your public and private interfaces so that you can access both the resources so private and the public one. So I hope you got the point let's move on. And now let's jump into some benefits of using Direct Connect. So the first one is reduced bandwidth cost. So with AWS Direct Connect, you can reduce the bandwidth cost with a huge margin because now you don't need to pay the intermediary cost because you have a direct connection to AWS. And then the data transfer rates with Direct Connect are mostly cheaper. So this is a very good thing to have. So the second one is consistent network performance. As we know with Direct Connect, you get the dedicated connection which reduces the overheads with network lags and propagations. In a way, it provides more stable and consistent network performance. So the third one is private connectivity to multiple VPCs. So this is an interesting point. So we spoke about multiple virtual interfaces, isn't it? So using that, we can also create connections to multiple VPCs as well. Scalability is very important. Even if you have a dedicated connection, if you want to avoid the low data transfer rates with VPN, you can replace it with your Direct Connect. And Direct Connect provides you with the 1 GBPS and 10 GBPS connections, which are way faster. And yes, you can provision multiple connections as well. And the fifth one is compatibility. So as this is a service provided by AWS, it's compatible with mostly all the AWS services that are over the internet like EC2, S3 and VPC. Let's move on. 
Okay, so next thing we need to understand is when to use Direct Connect. So the first use case is while working with large data sets. So as we have already discussed with Direct Connect, you get the dedicated connection which reduces the overheads with network lags and propagations in a way it provides more stable and consistent network performance. So when you're working with a huge data set or huge set of data and you need to transfer them, if you're using an ISP, it is going to be really expensive and constrained as well. But with Direct Connect, we can transfer it directly to the premises data centers and with much more faster speeds. So the underlining thing is that you actually bypass your ISP and you get your data transferred. And that is why it is very fast. And second case is real-time data feeds. You know that when it comes to real-time data such as audios or video feeds, latency can act as your biggest enemy or your biggest friend if it depends on what is the rate it is running on. So if it is high, then it is your biggest enemy. If it is low, it can be your biggest friend. And that's what Direct Connect helps us with. As this is a dedicated connection, you can control how the data is being routed. So in this way, you can reduce a lot of latency and make it more consistent. The third one is most obvious one that is a hybrid architecture. With Direct Connect, you can have your own private dedicated connections, which maximizes the benefit of cost and minimizes network overheads, ensuring that you have a secure connectivity from your data centers and AWS cloud. So now that we have some idea about the what's and why's of Direct Connect, let's come back to the how part. And let's understand how does the Direct Connect work. So as you already now are aware that AWS Direct Connect links your internal network to an AWS Direct Connect location over a standard Ethernet optical fiber cable in which one end of the cable is connected to your router and the other one is connected to an AWS Direct Connect router, isn't it? There is a statement that is really interesting and important and has been mentioned in the documentation as well is that an AWS Direct Connect location provides access to AWS in the region with which it is associated. Okay, so I'll repeat that once again so you can just let it sink in. So an AWS Direct Connect location provides access to AWS in the region with which it is associated. And you might ask me how. So direct connection as you may not be aware of, but it is a global service. So let's clear that out first. But you need to make a choice on the location that you want to use as a part of your direct connect location. And that is the way it actually provisions resources closer to the customer that it has. That is why even though the service itself is global, the locations are specific to the region. There may be more than one direct connect locations in a region there is no harm in checking that out, isn't it? So now that we have our AWS cloud, let's bring up our AWS Direct Connect location. So this is how the Direct Connection looks like. So you have the Direct Connection endpoint or the Direct Connect endpoint in the AWS cage. So cage is like your rack or site. I hope you're getting the point, isn't it? And which is connected to the customer or partner router in the respective cage and which creates a connection to the premises network or the customer network that you have. So here we need to discuss about two main components. One is the connection and the other one is the virtual interface themselves. So when we talk about the connection part, we know that we create a connection from the on-premise network to the AWS region or the direct connection location. And here as well, we have two segments. One is the dedicated connection and the other one we have is the hosted connection. We will talk about them in detail next so don't worry about that as of now so moving on we have the virtual interfaces that you see here as well so we have the vlan 1 and vlan 2 where vlan 1 that's the blue one which denotes the private virtual interfaces and we have the vlan 2 which is green and denotes the public virtual interface which helps us to connect to the public resources such as s3 and s3 glacier and on the customer side, we have the customer router or firewall, which completes the connection as a whole. And the people sitting on the customer end are able to access the resources stored in the cloud that is AWS. I hope you got some idea and how the Direct Connect works actually. So this may not be required so much in depth for the exam, but I wanted to share it nonetheless. It may help you in future when you will be working in AWS or with Direct Connect. So and then the customer side, we have the customer router or firewall, which completes the connection as a whole. And people sitting in the customer location or the on-premise location are able to access the resources. 
So you have the customer router which connects to the AWS Direct Connect location and the Direct Connect location actually gets connected to the AWS region that you have. So this is a completely secure line or a channel and this is completely dedicated and you are the only one who is going to use it. So that is much more secure for yourself. But yeah, it may cost you uh, for the connection and everything on for the usage, but it is way more secure than using the public internet space, which we were doing using the site to site VPN. Okay, so I just told you a few moments ago that I'll tell you about direct connect connection. So here it is. So let's talk about that. So we discussed in length about how AWS Direct Connect helps us to create a dedicated connection between the on-premise and the AWS Direct Connect locations. So what are these connections actually called? So we have two types of connections here. So one is the dedicated and the other one is the hosted one. And let's understand the differences here. So when you compare both of them, the biggest difference that you would see between them is that with dedicated connections, you as a customer can request for a dedicated connection using the console or API and AWS creates the physical Ethernet connection with that single customer that is you. But in the hosted one, what happens is that you directly contact a partner in the AWS Direct Connect partner program who will create the physical Ethernet connection on your behalf. So the partner associated with the Direct Connect partner program will have the provisions to do that. So other than the location, we have another aspect which is really important, that is the port speed. So if I say this point, you will ask me, okay, what is port speed? So you are going to be really surprised by answer because you already know the answer. So port speed is the maximum speed at which the data is transferred, like your bandwidth speed, which obviously depends on the port speed value that you have. That's as simple as it can get. So the dedicated connection, the possible port speed values are 1 Gbps and 10 Gbps and you cannot change the port speed after you create the connection request. And for the hosted connection, you have values ranging from 50 Mbps, 100 Mbps, 200 Mbps, 300, 400, 500, 1 Gbps, 2 Gbps, 5 Gbps and 10 Gbps. And here the AWS Direct Connect partners who have met a specific requirement may create a 1 Gbps, 2 Gbps, 5 Gbps up to 10 Gbps hosted connection. Here as well, you cannot change the port speed after you create the connection request. So this actually gives you an idea of how the speeds are going to vary and what are the customizations that you can do or what exactly is your requirement and what amount of speed that you need. And based on that, you will be charged. So make sure you make the proper decision as per your requirement. So you can go with the dedicated connection or you can go with the hosted connection as per your requirements. So till now we spoke about how we can create a single direct connect connection for our usage but what if we want more resilience and for that we need redundancy. So how are we going to achieve that in AWS Direct Connect? So with AWS Direct Connect you can make use of lag that is not like your lag in the sense you're lagging behind or something like that. Don't consider it to be that. So the full form of lag is link aggregation group. So if we want to make use of multiple connections and make them redundant, but it should basically act logically as a single connection. So for that, we make use of a LA CP protocol. So that is link aggregation control protocol, which helps us to aggregate multiple dedicated connections at a single direct connect endpoint. Okay, so I'll repeat this once again. So using a LACP protocol, that is the link aggregation control protocol, we can actually aggregate multiple dedicated connections at a single direct connect endpoint. Remember, even though they are two different connections, we combine them into a single managed connection and thus increasing the throughput beyond what a single connection can provide. So LACP protocol existed before all this as well and we are just making use of that to aggregate connections so that we can benefit from it. It's not something that AWS has created on its own, just like other things as well, isn't it? That's cool. So you can see we have the single connection or a single direct connect endpoint here from the AWS side and we have four dedicated connections that is connection one, two, three and four. And what, if, and what we have done is we have taken two connections and created a lag. Or see, when I tell this term lag, don't go ahead and think about lagging, just imagine the full form now okay so lag is basically your 
link aggregation group. So think of an aggregation. When I say we create a lag, think of an aggregation group. So which actually terminates at a single location. That is our direct connect location. So we have connections 1, 2 forming lag 1 and connection 3 and 4 forming the lag 2. But they are visualized as they are single connections even though they are formed with two dedicated connections. So with this you can just use and maintain two lags or two lag connections instead of using four dedicated connections. So that's quite impressive, isn't it? So now you have to just manage two lags, not four dedicated connections. But logically, they are actually like four connections, but you have aggregated them into two each so that it is easy to use and it is highly effective with redundancy. So with this, actually, you can use and maintain two lag connections instead of four dedicated connections. And that's really important for us. But before using this, you should understand a few more caveats to this or else you might face issues and uh, or you might have to make some changes in your design. So first one is all connections must be dedicated connections and have a port speed of 1 Gbps or 10 Gbps. By now you should be aware of what this port speed is. So I feel we are all good here because it can create a bottleneck. So it's advised to have same port speed for all the connections. All connections in the lag must use the same bandwidth. So that's quite uh, evident, isn't it? The third point is that you can have a maximum of four connections in a lag. Each connection in the lag counts towards your overall connection limit for the region. So that completes your quota of four connections in a lag. So that is why it is said that you must have a maximum of four connections in a lag. And the fourth point is, is also very self-explanatory. All connections in the lag must terminate at the same AWS direct connect endpoint. Terminate here doesn't mean like terminator we are not at war here okay we are not destroying anything all connections in the lag must terminate at the same aws direct connect endpoint means that there is a connection point okay imagine there is a connection point where you connect your physical line and all the connections should be plugged into that point or the endpoint so from there other connections can be created or devices can be plugged in and that's what connection termination means. So in the same way that I want to tell you that all connections in the lag must terminate at the same AWS Direct Connect endpoint. So coming back to yet another very important feature, we saw lags in the Direct Connect, which actually helps us with redundancy. But what if we want to connect multiple VPCs to a single Direct Connect endpoint and make use of it? Yes, you can do that. And for that, you need to make use of the AWS Direct Connect gateways. So before that, I want to tell you something about Direct Connect that remember that a Direct Connect gateway is a globally available service. You can create the Direct Connect gateway anywhere in any region that you have and access it from all other regions. Remember this point very carefully. Okay, so a Direct Connect gateway is a globally available service or resource and you can create the Direct Connect gateway in any region and access it from all other regions. So having said that, let's see the example here. So we have VPC in US West 2. So that's on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we have another VPC at US East 1. And to have it connected to the direct connection endpoint or the direct connect endpoint, we need to create virtual private gateways across both the VPCs so that we can have a connection point channel which is secure. That is also called as your virtual private gateway associations as you can see in the image as well. The highlighted ones so now that we have created the virtual private gateways or the associations the next thing is to connect the gateway to the direct connect location isn't it so for that we have created the private virtual interface to connect our direct connect location and the direct connect gateway and that location will obviously have a connection to the customer gateway just like we had in the previous one so in normal situation also you will have a direct connect location actually connected to the customer gateway or the customer network which actually creates the direct connect connection isn't it but here what happens is we are not connecting the direct connect endpoints directly to the vpcs we are just using the direct connect gateways to connect more than one vpc to it so as you can see we have Two VPCs, US West 2 and US East 1 and both of them have the virtual private gateways and the associations to the direct connect gateways and that actually is connected using the private virtual interface to the direct connect location and the direct connect location is connected to the customer gateway. So we have a channel here till the direct connect gateway it's a single pass and from there you can connect multiple interfaces or multiple VPCs. 
So that's the whole idea. In this process, you have to consider a few things. So you need to choose the VPC that you're going to associate it with and you need to ensure that you have your virtual private gateways created to create the associations. And once you have all this, go ahead and create your Direct Connect Gateway. And there is one more thing that you need to remember here very carefully. There is no property of being transitive. And remember that even if you have an association with your Direct Connect Gateway, it doesn't allow you to connect to other VPGs or the virtual private gateways to communicate with each other. Okay, so it's just like not being transitive. So make sure you keep this in mind. It is not meant to connect to virtual private gateways, but instead it is used to connect your on-premise to the AWS cloud. So you might ask me, should I create direct connect gateways in a specific location? So don't worry about that. As I already told you, it is a globally available resource. You can create it in any region you want and access it from any other region. That is why you are able to connect the VPC1 and the VPC2 with the same direct connect gateway location or the connection. I hope that was clear. Let's move on. Okay, that was all about the concepts. Now let's get some hands-on demo for these services. I hope you are excited for this. Let's jump into the AWS console now. Okay, so this is your AWS VPC console. So if you're new to this and if you haven't watched the previous episodes in VPC, so just remove this very carefully that the current VPC that you have here is based on the location that you have. So this is the Mumbai location that we have here. So AP South 1. And the status is service is operating normally so that's well and good you don't have any problems and everything that you have created on your own or it has been set by default will be listed here so we previously have discussed about site-to-site -site vpn connections and virtual private gateways and there is one more service that we need to discuss today so that is direct connect just search here so now there is a change in the ui that you can see that you get to search directly from here. Otherwise, we used to go here in the service panel and we used to search the same. So now you can do it directly from here. So not a problem. So just click on Direct Connect. So this is the starting page that you will get if you have not created any resources. But if suppose, actually, I don't know what's the property of this website. If you have visited it once and if you haven't created any resources or anything also, it will just take you to the actual page itself. So this is the one that actually you need to see if you haven't created any connections yet. So here it actually tells you that it lets you establish a dedicated network connection to AWS and uh, connects directly to an AWS device from your router at AWS direct connect location. So this is the connection that we want to create. So the router that you have for AWS will be at the AWS direct connect location. And your router will be, it'll be at your place or your office at your data center. Okay. So don't worry about that. Then you have to just click on create connection. See, so here there are two options that we get to create the connection. One is the classic and one is the connection wizard. So what does it say? So the classic says that create connections one at a time, best for augmenting an existing setup. So we don't have this existing setup yet, but if suppose I had to choose this, then what I have to do, I have to provide the connection name like uh, my connection. I'm not going to create it. So don't worry about that because we don't have any company or we are not affiliated to any other organization so that we can create one. So we'll just see the features or the form that we are getting to create one. Okay. So there's the location. So location in which your connection is located. So you can just choose one from here based on the, so if suppose it is in Hyderabad, you can just click on Hyderabad. So as you can see here, this is the global service and it does not affiliate itself with any other region specific. So you don't have to worry about this. You can just create it in any region that you want. So this is your location and uh, this is a port speed that I already told you the desired bandwidth for your new connection. So it can be like one GBPS or 10 GBPS. Okay, so if it is on-premise, so you connect through an AWS Direct Connect partner or you can just uncheck this. So it will just choose the APN partners. So if you want to choose the Direct Connect partner, you can just select that and you can choose the service provider. So with that, actually, I told you before that in India, we have Tata Communications working as the Direct Connect partner. The Tata Communications is the one whom you're going to hand over the LOA or the letter of authorization. And these are the people who are going to create your connection and you have to hand over the LOA or the letter of authorization to them. In post which you can add additional settings like tag. So you can just add a tag by giving name and the value. So this is all about the classic connection. 
and let's suppose i want to have a more precise wizard like structure that, that i want to use so i can just choose the connection wizard which actually create connections using your resiliency recommendations recommended for new setups so if this is your new setup then just click on this you see there are three options here that is what i wanted to tell you before but i did not say that because anyways we were about to discuss this in a demo so uh, so the first one is maximum resiliency so maximum resiliency for critical workloads so if you can just read this you will understand what exactly it is trying to tell you so you can achieve maximum resiliency for critical workloads by using separate connections that terminate on separate devices in more than one locations as shown in the figure this topology provides resiliency against device connectivity and complete connection failures as well so what exactly it tells is that you have more than one direct connect locations this endpoint fails or this endpoint fails you don't have to worry about anything it will have more than one to actually suffice your requirement and it will never let you fail or it will provide you the highest resiliency that you can get and the next one is high resiliency so if you choose this what happens is so it will have only one direct connect endpoint in each one so but in the maximum you get two but here you will get only one and that will be connected to the customer so here as well you can achieve high resiliency for critical workloads by using two single connections to multiple locations and this topology provides resiliency against connection failures caused by a fiber cut or a device failure so if this fails this works if this this fails and this works so this also helps prevent a complete location failure of this total location fails also not a problem you will be able to reach and the next one is development and uh, testing so this is this uses a single connection and you can see that you can achieve development and test resiliency for non-critical workloads by using separate connections that terminate on separate devices on one location so this topology provides resiliency against device failure but does not provide resiliency against location failure because this is just set to one location but even though it is set to one location it has a termination endpoint for two so it terminates to two endpoints as it is already written that it terminates on separate devices in one location so based on that even if one fails then you will have a resiliency of even if connecting to your customer data center but it is not that useful for the highly critical workloads it is just for development and testing so let's suppose i choose connection wizard and i choose development and testing let's suppose i click on next it will provide me with the options to actually configure the type of bandwidth that i need 1 gb 2 gb 3 gb up to 40 gbps and i can provide the location that i have so ap south 1 ap south one yeah so let's suppose i have sct hyderabad dc1 so data center one and the service provider that is data communications so if you want to choose any other let's suppose i choose mumbai so you get more number of uh, service providers bharti airtel is there net magic solutions is there lines geo is there geo geo people so stiffy is there vodafone is there vodafone idea is that i think they have collaborated now so it's not a problem why why vi so that's it and uh, you have additional settings like add tag like previous one and you can just click on next so here as i already told you that it will provide you two connections in the same location that you have and for resiliency of course and uh, this will cost you an estimate of 0.60 dollars per hour and monthly 439.20 for port usage and additional data transfer charges okay billing will begin once the connection between the aws router and your router is established or 90 days after you ordered the port whichever comes first okay so these are the ones who will actually do that job for you once you create this then the next step will be you can get the loa or the letter of authorization but we are not going to do that so we will not create any connections here so now the virtual interfaces if you want to create any virtual interfaces you can just click on this so you can create a private interface or you can create a public interface as i told you or you can create a transit interface so let's suppose i choose private i can provide the virtual interface name that i want and the connection so let's suppose the physical connection on which the new virtual interface will be provision so if i had created that then that would have shown in the drop down list but it is not so i'm not getting anything here and it is asking me for the virtual interface owner the account that will own the virtual interface so it will be my account or it can be another account okay so uh, you can either choose a gateway type of direct connect gateways that is recommended or you can use the virtual private gateway so there are two options here for us with the gateway types so 
if you want to connect it to the direct current gateway so as i already told you we can create a virtual private uh, private virtual interface to connect to our uh, location and the direct connect gateway uh, so that we can connect multiple vpcs so if you want to do that you can use the direct connect gateway here or else you can choose a virtual private gateway to connect to the single vpc in the same region and let's suppose you want to create or choose a direct connect gateway then you have to provide that once you've created it or you can create uh, or you can choose one of the virtual private gateways and the next one is the vlan so the vlan or the virtual local area network number that you also can provide for the new virtual interface that you're going to create and the bgp asn so this is something that we have already discussed before in the side to side vpn so if you haven't checked that you can go for like you can just uh, read more about that and you can check the video about we have discussed already on the autonomous system number so you can provide that it is for the route propagation and here also you can add the additional settings like uh, whether it should be uh, ipv4 or ipv6 based on that you have to provide the router peering so you have to provide the cider blocks for this one and the bgp authentication key and all this actually this is not that important it is too in depth for the exam as well so i don't think so we need to go over that and so once you have filled on the details and then you can create the virtual private interface so if you have the uh, private interface then you can connect to your uh, ec2 instances and if you create for the public one you can just uh, access your s3 or s3 glacier and for the transit actually i'll discuss it when we discuss transit gateways so we'll keep that aside for now then click on cancel so when coming back to lag so as i already told you lag is basically your uh, link aggregation group so you can just create a, a link aggregation group with using the existing connections or by requesting new connections so let's suppose we are using an existing connection to create the lag so you have to provide the lag name and existing connection details so the number of connections that you want so next is the number of new connections that is optimal so as we already told that four connection is the max so you can have four here and the minimum links can be two because you have to link isn't it you cannot have link with one connection you need more than one connection so the minimum is two and the maximum will be four and that is how you create the lag and you can just provide the tags here so in lag what we do is we just couple both of the connections or more than one connection that we have and we try to create it as a single logical uh, managed connection so that's what we are trying to do here and you can request new connection as well so you can just provide the connection link the speed it is just like creating your new order for diet connect again so based on that you can provide the details here just cancel it now come back to direct current gateways so when we click on this we can just provide the name of the direct current gateway and the autonomous system number the asn number and once you create this what happens is this may appear to be a two value field form but once you create it you will have provisions to access it through other forms or other services so let's suppose i have a virtual interface and when i went to the create virtual interface i was asked i was asked about like can you provide me the right gateway name that we have so i can just provide this basically that is a feature or that is a service so that is why it does not have much values to be taken into account for so you connect uh, your interfaces to the virtual private gateway not the other way around so these are the things that are really important for the direct connect so connection virtual interfaces lags and direct connect gateways i don't think so we need to dig more into this you can as well read the documentation for further information on how everything is configured if you want and uh, i think you should and i think that's it from the demo side i think we can move on from this okay that was a lot of information for one session but i hope you enjoyed today's session of aws uh, that was aws direct connect and if you wish to support me the links to insta mojo paypal and patreon are given in the description below and please do subscribe it helps the channel grow and uh, that's it from my side today i hope i will meet you in the next session of aws so until then it's pytholic signing off